everyone, it's Unsung NPC back here with another Dragon Age video for you. Uh, today we are taking a look at the skills for your characters. We are going to be talking about the skills and what they do, how to get them. They're going to be talking about what's good for your character. We're going to be talking about what's good for your party composition. Which skills can be necessary and which skills can be ditched and kicked to the side of the road. But before we get into that, I just want to take a minute to tell you guys that you should come watch me stream. I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash unsungnpc0318. You can catch me on there. We're streaming the Dragon Age series right now. We're on Inquisition already. Ooh. We're streaming the Baldur Gate series deep into Baldur's Gate 2 right now. It is a fun, fun time. Baldur's Gate 3 will be played after when it comes out. And we are also playing some Wildermyth on the side. I've got some other things planned after Inquisition is over. We're going to be doing the Baldur's Gate 2 DLC, uh, Throne of Ball eventually. So lots of fun things over there. Totally go check it out. And yeah, thank you. Let's talk about these skills, okay? So, first of all, I'm showing you right now all of the skills in Awakening and Origins. So, Awakening the DLC and the base game, okay? But these last three are only in Awakening, and I just want to clarify that, okay? I'm not, I don't have magic skills, I don't have more skills than you or anything if you haven't played awakening and you don't know what those are don't worry about it okay so first let's go over the origin skills okay we've got coercion stealing trap making survival herbalism poison making combat training combat tactics okay and then for awakening rune crafting vitality clarity now i'm basically gonna go over these all encompassing and then one at a time but I'm gonna do it in an order of importance um, okay so coercion people are probably gonna disagree with me I think coercion is probably the most important skill in the game there's just so much stuff you can't do and lots of content bits you don't get access to if you don't have coercion if you can't persuade and you can't intimidate you need to be able to do one of those two things, I think, to have a more fulfilling playthrough, but that's my personal opinion, okay? Now, coercion, you need to get 16 cunning to max it out, okay? So as long as you have that, you're good. If you're wanting to intimidate, all you need is 16 cunning, because the rest of your intimidation is going to be based on your strength stat. Not going to be tied to cunning at all. If you're persuading, you're gonna want cunning because cunning is your stat for persuasion and that's what all of your persuasion is based on so pers cunning for persuasion strength for intimidation and then all four of these will count as a level of coercion as well and if you get 25 points in either cunning or strength every 25 points in those is another rank of coercion okay and yes there are coercion checks that require more than just four ranks of coercion. So maxing this out and dumping both of those stats is not going to be helpful to you. You will not be able to do enough to persuade or intimidate in the entire game, okay? Very, very important skill. You want this skill on your main character. Your main character is the one that talks. Your main character is the one that persuades, the one that intimidates. You want to put it on your main character, bar none. Okay, next important thing, um, combat tactics, okay? Combat tactics is important for your companions, okay? These are going to be your tactic slots, and I'm going to get into a video about what tactic slots are more in detail and kind of talk about the best way to build those out, but for this video, just know that for your, character, for your companions to do things in combat on their own, without you giving them orders, they have to have tactic slots. There's different ways that they can get them. The easiest way is to level out your combat tactics skill. So I pretty much put all four ranks into every companion. There are companions that actually come with all four ranks already or close to. 
So I recommend every companion, all four ranks of combat tactics, unless you really love to micromanage your entire team. Uh, for your main character, you don't need it unless you want to make Origins an auto battler and you just want your character to go on their own. I don't even think that would still work because when you control your character, they just sit there. I think they only do their automated their automated tactics when you're not controlling them. So for me, I don't I don't ever put those on my main character because I'm always controlling my main character unless I need someone to drink a potion. So it's not necessary. It's not necessary at all. Um, okay, and this is also based on cunning. So every character is going to need at least 16 points of cunning to be able to do this. Next are the crafting skills. We've got trap making, herbalism, and poison making. Herbalism and poison making are both just level required. There are no, no cunning required. Same with trap making. All levels, no cunning necessary. Um, herbalism is going to be your potions okay health potions and lyrium potions and injury kits are going to be your three main things that you're going to want to make um mabari crunch if you got the dog you might want to get those so the dog can heal from injuries because they can't use injury kits um other than that like all the other salves and weird elemental resistance things i don't really think they're necessary so i don't ever mess with them i just focus on health potions lyrium potions for mana and a Bari Crunch um, for the dog, and that's about it. And injury kits as well, injury kits. Though you find, you typically find plenty of injury kits, I feel like, um, but that's that's what I do. That's what I would do for that. And then poison making is poisons and bombs. So it includes grenades, so fire bombs, acid bombs, uh, electric bombs. They've got, you know, poisons that do stunning, poisons that do nature damage, uh, poisons that do poison over time lots of cool lots of cool things that you can make I recommend it because I feel like they definitely give you an edge in battle and also they're really fun to play with um, so I I constantly use poisons and in the playthrough we streamed I used poisons all the time we I had two rogue characters that did dual wielding we constantly had poisons on those characters I had lots of bombs as well that I threw around a bunch it's just it's nice damage it's nice assistance and the, the poison that does the stunning for you is amazing as well like it's only a 10% chance to stun each hit I think but you're gonna get stunts like you are there's a lot of enemies so you're doing a lot of hits as a dual wielder as well which is super super nice Trap making, I'm just now starting to play with. I've never played a trap making character in the five times that I have played this game all the way through. Uh, but here I am trying it out, possibly. Traps are what they are. You you know, there's fire traps, uh, grease traps, acid traps, cow traps, lots of different traps, and you place them down and they trigger them as they walk over them and something happens to them. Uh, lures are the other things trap making can do and lures are they like distractions or they like make the enemies go to a certain spot or they they do various different things i haven't gotten deep into lures yet to find out what all there is but apparently they you know they do a lot of different crowd control type things which i think is really really nice um so i like trap making i don't think it's necessary i wouldn't tell you you need it in your team but I think that you would enjoy having it in your team, and that's what's important. Um, herbalism and poison making, put them in your team. You need them. I, you can't live without them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you need them in there. Do it. I kind of skipped over this because it is important, but it's kind of like an obvious importance, so I didn't go over it in the correct order probably. But combat training, if you're a warrior or a rogue, you're going to take all four ranks of combat training. Uh, it's it gives you attack and armor a little bit, but just a little bit, but it also Makes it to where you gain access to the top tier weapon talents weapon abilities for dual wielding two-handed sword and shield and archery If you want those great abilities, you're gonna need all the training of combat training You're gonna need all of it. So plan for that accordingly if you're a mage uh, I think at one point it gives you a plus one to mana regeneration. Oh, warriors and rogues also get stamina regeneration. 
uh, at this second level. Other than that, it just increases how much damage you can take before your spell casting gets interrupted. So when you're casting a longer cast spell, you can take a certain amount of damage in a hit and you will be interrupted. Um, this increases that threshold so you can take more damage from a hit before you're interrupted from your spell casting. I typically don't go above two. I take the first one and then I take the second one for that mana regeneration. It's plus one, but on top of the damage from interrupts, it's nice. So I take two and I don't really mess around. Other than that, I don't feel the need to for mages. You want those points better use somewhere else. So that's what I would do, but it's up to you. If you want all four, great. If you don't want any of them, you don't really care. Maybe you're good at keeping your mage away from getting hit. Good luck with that. Um, that's up to you. So Next we have survival. Survival requires cunning. Okay, so does stealing. Also requires cunning. 16 cunning for each. Survival is going to give you better detection presence of nearby creatures, okay? So it starts out with two levels below your own level and then also gets you 5% bonus to nature resistance. Don't take this at level one. You don't need to. No one's gonna be lower level than you at level one. You're not gonna be able to detect them. <laughs> um, and then eventually it'll increase that to being up to equal to your level and you get another 5% bonus for nature resistance. Then you can do two up to two levels higher. And it also reveals the subtype of the creature and its level. And then gives you another bonus to nature resistance. And then you can also do all creatures of any level, all stealth to enemies included, which is actually really nice. And then also another bonus to nature resistance and 2%. Um, physical so you're gonna get what a total of 25 nature resistance 2% physical resistance and then you're gonna be able to detect creatures of all levels and stealth enemies. that's the really useful one at rank 4 being able to detect stealth enemies is actually pretty big because there's lots of different kinds of stealth enemies there's stealth werewolves there's stealth darkspawn there's stealth rogues for bandits there's all kinds of stealthy enemies. There's stealth wolves, okay? So there's stealth spiders, there's a lot. Uh, so it's nice to have, if you get it, you only need one character in your party to benefit from the enemy tracking. It will just show up red dots on your mini map a lot closer. Like you don't have to be as close to be able to, to detect the enemy, essentially. You're gonna be able to find them before they find you. Okay, and set up traps and surprises and all that kind of stuff. Um, super, super useful in that regard. Um, it's used in conversation, I think, two or three times in the whole game. Um, so, you know, not much use there. If you're someone who's played this game a lot of times, you don't need it. You're going to know where the enemies are if you're anything like me. I already know where, like, every enemy group is in this game. Like every time I play, I go into an area or a dungeon and I'm like, I already know where the enemy is, I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I don't need to worry about anything. I can set up easy. So if you've played a bunch, don't need it. If you haven't, might be fun. Stealing, uh, probably most useless skill out of the list. All it does is let you steal things, sometimes potions, mostly trash loot and money which is not very much money either. Um, but, you know, eventually at rank four, you can steal from people in the middle of combat. I've never stolen weapons from anybody or like any actual useful potions or bombs they might use in combat. Um, Cause enemies don't typically actually do a good job of using that stuff in combat anyway. But I, I, yeah, I haven't done it that much. So I've only pretty much stolen from NPCs around town, gotten some money, gotten some trash loot, called it a day. It's fun. It's, you know, it's funny. It's the most useless skill on the list. It's not needed. What do you need it for? What's it doing for you? I don't know. But if you want to play that kind of character, totally go for it. Role play is super valid. If you don't, don't bother with it. The awakening skills. We've got rune crafting. In the first game, in Origins, you can make, you can buy 
and find weapon runes. They added armor runes into Awakening, and then also in Awakening, you can now craft both weapon and armor runes, and that's what this does. Let's you craft runes, which you couldn't craft before. Vitality is just bonus health, 25 health per rank. Clarity is 25 mana or stamina per rank. Both of these are super nice. I am hopefully by the time you get to awakening you've kind of maxed out what skills you want to do here already that's your kind of goal um with max character level you can safely do that and then get into awakening and just max out just get as much of these two trees as you can um and that's what that's pretty much why i focus on it's really really nice that like having a boost to mana and stamina is great because you don't have to dump points into willpower to get that if you're um, a mage willpower is easy you know to put points into if you're a rogue or a warrior i find that putting points into willpower is kind of hard because you want strength you want dex you want constitution there's all these different things you want and i you know now you can get mana and stamina without having to put points in there or you can get health without having to put as many points in the constitution so it's really, really nice. Those are really, really nifty to have. Um, I appreciate those a lot. So yeah, your character wants this. Companions want tactics. Everyone who can fight is gonna want combat training. You're gonna want at least one person in your party with herbalism, poison making, trap making is optional if you think it's fun. Survival is optional if you think it's fun or useful. Stealing is optional if you think it's fun. And then rune crafting, I wouldn't say it's useful because there's plenty of people to buy runes from still, but you and you can still find some, but you can craft like the higher level ones. I just don't think they're really needed to like do well in the game. Um, and then these two are super, super useful. Now, a rogue, I believe it's warrior in Origins alone, not in Awakening. In Origins, warriors and mages get will get eight skill points and rogues will get 12 skill points so if you're gonna put four points into coercion which you should do if you want to be able to talk to people um then if you're a warrior or a mage you've got four points left uh, typically i'll put that into a crafting skill that i want to do or i will put it into combat training if i need combat training um so if you're a warrior, probably going to do coercion and combat training. That's the easiest way to go about it. Um, if you're a mage, you can do this and then crafting skill. Okay. Uh, but you can also dump your crafting skills onto your companions. Like everyone can have a crafting skill. There's plenty of room. If you're a rogue, you get 12 points. So you, I do coercion. I'll do combat training if, as because you need it as a rogue. And then I'll do a crafting skill of some sort. Right now I'm doing combat training coercion and um trap making so that's kind of what i do for my skill points unfortunately characters start with certain skill points like rogues i think start with a rank and poison making i don't do poison making as a rogue though i dump it off to someone else to do and i want to i want to try trap making but you know it'll be fine so the starting skills are whatever there's mods for that you can fix it but that's the uh that's how it goes but yeah that's the skills um like i said for combat tactics we'll kind of go over that in more detail for like planning how you want to do your tactics for your party other than that these are all pretty easy they're pretty well explained in their descriptions i don't think there's really anything that like oh i don't know what that is or what that means like it's all pretty self-explanatory um and i'm just here re-explaining it <laughs> Uh, but they're I've, you know, I've given you my tips on what's useful what's not and what you should do what you shouldn't do It's all opinion. It's all subjective. Everyone's gonna have their own ways of playing Totally fine. Do what works best for you. I just am here to give you the information So there's your skills and with that folks, I am out of here uh, Like I said, come check me out on Twitch dot tv slash unsung npc 0318 we're streaming all the time it's super fun i stream like f five days a week 
which is pretty good sometimes an extra day sometimes a little a day less depending on plans but it's super fun over there we've hit 100 followers recently come hang out with us come check us out the link for that is in the description below the link for the discord is in the description below so you can join our little friendly neighborhood and hang out with us and talk game and we're talking about all kinds of game stuff you know starfield Baldur's gate 3 pathfinder dlcs coming out um all kinds of fun things that we're we're all talking about uh we talk about uh dragon age dreadwolf sometimes new pokemon games lots of stuff so come check us out there It'd be really fun to have you but uh otherwise i'm unsung npc and i will catch you guys in the next one peace